Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chen She, and I'm a software engineer on the AMP project. And today, I'm going to talk to you about building a new AMP component. I'm going to walk you through what is an AMP component, why you should care about building one, when should you build one, and then how to do it. So first, what is an AMP component? Well, you can think of an AMP component as a building block with which you build AMP pages. And a good example is the AMP light box. So here on the left-hand side, we have a page that has an image. And when you tap on an image, it expands and goes to the full view. This is a light box. And this is one of the blocks that helps to build this page. Now, why would you ever care? Oh, I am a couple slides behind. Why would you ever care to build an AMP component? Well, you might have a need or an idea that doesn't yet exist. You don't want to wait around and hope that someday maybe someone will hopefully build it. You're dying to join our AMP community, and we welcome you to join our community. And you want everyone to see what wonderful work you're capable of doing. You want to showcase your skills. And also, you want to have impact. In case you forgot, we have over 1.4 billion AMP documents out there in over 100 languages, and we see about 26 million pages every week. And you can be a part of that. Now, let me ask you a question. How many AMP components do you think are out there today that were created by people outside of the AMP project? Anyone? You? Well, yes, what's your name? Jacob. How many AMP components do you think there are? 20? Well, I didn't actually count them. But <laughs> <laughs> these are all AMP components that were created by people outside of the AMP project. There are a lot of them. And we have a few statistics about them, too. They are being used in the millions. That's pretty amazing. Now, Bez told us earlier today that we have 300 unique contributors to AMP. And we have over 9,000 developers engaged with the AMP community. So there are a lot of people that are a part of this community. And you can be one of those people as well. Now, when would you build an AMP component? A great use case is the component does not yet exist. And it needs JavaScript. A good example is that light box that we talked about. When you tap on an image, it expands. It needs JavaScript to do that. Another use case is if you're lo loading external, um, external resources. So for example, you're welcome to use the image HTML tag when you build web pages. Right? It's there for you. The problem is that if you have an image all the way down at the bottom of a page, it's going to have to load before your user sees something in the viewport. And if you want to have control over when an element loads and you want to do smart things like prioritization, then you can create AMP components to do that for you. Another good use case is if you have some useful semantics. So I can use the AMP iframe to load a YouTube video, but maybe I can make good use of an element such as the AMP YouTube element, if I have a user enter the video ID, and then I can verify that this video actually exists. As a side note, if you're building a component for a video player, I hope that someone else is using it and not just you. Um, that's one of our requirements, that it's being used by more than one person. Now, all these things that I mentioned, they go, they're considered core components. They belong in the AMP HTML project under the extensions directory. Now, there is a use case where you might want to develop something that already kind of exists, but you want to add a twist to it. You need it to be a little bit different. And a great example is AMP tabs. AMP tabs does not exist. It needs JavaScript. 
and tabs is a pretty common thing in web pages. So we're like, yeah, let's build an AMP tabs component. However, it turns out that the AMP selector is very, very similar. So in this, case, in this uh, use case, instead of building AMP tabs, you would take AMP selector, add some markup, and then you have AMP tabs. And we encourage you to do that as well. Um, but when you do that, please take your code and put it in AMP by example so other developers can see how to use it um, and follow what you did. Now, there is an exception, as there always is, and that's a use case that hides complication. So another example is AMP rating. It turns out that AMP rating is very similar to AMP selector as well, and it's just a little bit of CSS except it's not just a little bit of CSS, it's actually pretty complicated and it's a lot of work to put on the developer's shoulders. So this does exist in AMP by example, but because it's complex and we wanted the user, the developer experience to be easy, we also made an AMP component for it. So now that you know everything about AMP components, let's talk about how to build one. Congratulations you've decided to bring an AMP component in the world. <laughs> now, in many cultures, it's usually custom when you want to bring a child into the world, it's usually custom to talk to your partner about it ahead of time. Uh, most people like to know and would not want to be surprised. And we are no different, uh, so please, the minute you decide to build an AMP component, please let us know about it. Please talk to us early on so that we can help you out and make sure you're doing the right things before you put all the work into it. And there are a bunch of ways you can contact us. The best way to start out with is to file a GitHub issue where you can write down all your thoughts. Then you can ping us on Slack and say, hey guys, here's a link to my GitHub issue, please take a look at it. And that's great as well, but if you want to show up in person, we also have these weekly meetings where we have these design reviews and they're open to the public and you're welcome to come with your questions. Um, and it happens every Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m. All right, so now you've decided to build an AMP component. Now you have to think about a name. And we have naming conventions. Every component has to start with AMP dash. And then the next name that comes after that has to describe what you're doing. And for this presentation, we thought long and hard about a very wonderful name, because when you name your baby, it has to be a great name. Um, so we came up with Amp Blah. That's what we're gonna name our component for this presentation. And now that we have a name, we have to think about the document structure. So under the extensions directory, you're gonna create your own directory, and it's gonna be in the name of your new AMP element. And in that directory, you're gonna have a folder called 0.1 that's gonna have all of your logic, and you're gonna have an MD file. This is gonna be documentation for other developers to know how to use your element. And when you think about how other developers are using your element, please put yourself in their shoes and make their lives very easy. You wanna make sure that it's very easy for developers to implement the code that you're writing, that you're putting so much time in. You want it to be used. Um, so this is what's gonna go in the MD file. Now let's talk about what goes in 0.1. You're gonna have a validator file. These are the validator rules. We talked about a script that validates that AMP pages were created correctly. Well, these are the rules that you're gonna write to make sure that other developers are creating your page correctly. You're gonna have a JavaScript file with all the core logic, and then you're gonna have a test directory where you put all of your tests. Now let's talk about the life cycle of an AMP element. What makes it work so well? Um, initially, an AMP element is gonna start off in a state of not built. And what happens is, the browser is gonna see this element for the first time before the JavaScript has been loaded. And for that split second, the browser has no idea what this is. So it's gonna treat it like a div, but because CSS is inlined and already there, CSS is gonna be applied. So the user won't see anything different. Eventually, the JavaScript is gonna load, 
and the AMP element is going to be upgraded to an official AMP element, and the browser is going to know exactly what to do. All right, now most AMP elements extend the base element. And what you're going to do is you're going to have a constructor to initiate your variables. And then there's going to be the build callback. And the stuff that you do in the build callback is going to be, A, you want to validate that your element was created properly. So for the example of AMP Hulu, one of the requirements is to have a video ID for the Hulu video. So you can have these validations in your build callback. The other thing you can do in the build callback is manipulate the DOM. So here we, let's go back to the AMP carousel example. On the left side, this is how an AMP carousel is created by a developer. Nowhere here in the HTML do we see arrows or buttons or anything like that. The developer never had to deal with that. They shouldn't. And in the build callback, that's where you can add these manipulations and add all the functionality. We also have pre-connect. So if you go back to uh, videos, for example, there's a lot that goes on when you load a video. It's a very heavy operation. And one of the things that you can do is pre-connect so that in the video example, when it's time to load the video, it's going to be much faster. So here we've already connected to the host. Now, after all of these elements, all of these methods have been called, the state of your element is going to be built. You can think of this as getting ready to go on stage for a performance. After that, you're going to have the layout callback. This is what you're going to call when you're going to do the expensive operations and when you're actually going to be loading the heavy things like your video files. And the state here is going to be laid out. Or you can think of it as you're ready to go, you're on the side of the stage, and you're waiting for your cue. Then you're going to have the viewport callback. This gets called when your element goes into the viewport, when the, view, when the user can actually see your element. The state of your element is going to be in viewport. This is showtime. This is you front and center. Everyone's eyes are on you. And finally, there's going to be unlayout callback. That's going to be called occasionally when you want to remove the expensive resources from the page. And this is your cue to take a bow and exit. And the state is going to be not laid out. So to go back to the life cycle of an element, you're going to start off with not built, built, laid out, in viewport, and finally, not laid out. Now, you've gone through all the work. You have a wonderfully working element. What's the approval process? How do you get this thing live? Well, what you need is two reviewers to approve your, um, your PR on GitHub. And then, once you've approved, you have a brand new AMP element into the world. <laughs> now, You've worked long and hard on this element, and you put your heart, sweat, and tears into it. And we want to make sure that you continue to have ownership and responsibility over this AMP component. We don't want to take it away from you. It's yours. So what you want to do at this point is create an owner's file where you put the GitHub names of all of the component parents, all the people who are responsible for this little component child. Now, as your component grows, your versions might change as well. And I talked about a directory called 0.1. What does 0.1 even mean? Well, 0.1 is the version of your component. And you can continue to contribute code and make changes and add things to your component. And your version will stay 0.1. The only time it ever changes is if the API changes. And what does that even mean? Let's say you have some attribute that a developer adding your component has to put in their page. And for some reason, you have to remove this attribute and put a different attribute. And that's going to break. 
any, anyone else who is still using your component with some attribute. So in this case, your version number would increase. That's what it means. Now a lot of components, when they're first released into the world, they're released as experiments, and we encourage you to do the same. Um, and to do so, you want to put your component in the experiments file. And then in the build callback, you want to verify that the experiment has been enabled, because maybe not everyone wants to be a part of the experiment. Now, when you bring a child into the world, when you're a first-time parent, usually you have a lot of questions. You don't really know what you're doing a lot of the times. You go to the pediatrician, and the pediatrician is there to help you and answer all your questions. And we're also your pediatrician in this case. Um, you can ask us questions through GitHub. You can file issues. You can contact us on Slack. And you can also show up in person um, to this Hangouts meeting that we have every week, Wednesdays, from 1 to 2 PM. And if you're too afraid to talk to us at this point, or you want to look something up online by yourself, there's also the contributing.md file. And that hopefully will have a lot of answers to your questions as well. Now finally, as they say, it takes a village to raise a child. And it takes a village, a 9,300 person village, to raise an AMP component as well. And you don't have to be a contributor by creating your own component. You can be just as impactful in a component's life by being their aunt, their uncle, their grandmother, their grandfather. You can make an impact as well. There are many issues out there. And we encourage you to take on these issues and help contribute to grow these components and make sure that they're successful. So now. You have an idea. You don't want to wait around for someone to hopefully someday maybe implement it. You're dying to join the AMP community, the AMP village. You want to show everyone what amazing work you're capable of. And you want to have this great impact. So stop waiting. Get on out there and build AMP components. Thank you.